What's up, everybody? Another Post Gazette video from Steelers practice. Brian Batko joined by Ray Fittipaldo. As always, this update brought to you by Savinas Kane and Gallucci, mesothelioma and asbestos lawyers with over 85 years of experience in the industry. Call them for a free consultation. And uh, another Thursday, we just heard from the Steelers coordinators, Ray, offensive coordinator Arthur Smith, followed by defensive coordinator Terrell Austin, both talking a little bit about last week's game, uh, the 13-6 win against the Broncos, but also previewing Steelers Chargers, a matchup of 2-0 and teams. What stood out to you from that press session just behind us here? Yeah, I mean, I thought what Arthur Smith was telling us about Justin Fields being very smart in his approach, um, being very efficient. It's clear that Arthur Smith likes the way he's playing. I know fans out there don't necessarily want to see him passing for 150 yards, Brian, but it's been effective so far, and it's the way the Steelers want to play football under Mike Tomlin, and I think that's the background of Arthur Smith too. You could talk to, you know, talk to us about, you know, him having his own background in, in, in Tennessee and in, in Atlanta, but really. Um, he's doing what Mike Tomlin wants him to do, and right now it's working. Also some speculation or rumblings, rumors, whatever you want to call it, about him maybe not having a full grasp of Arthur Smith's offense. I don't get that vibe <laughs> listening to Arthur Smith. I mean, he right. talked about how, yeah, how smart he's playing situationally. And, you know, uh, the first question that he dealt with was from our beat partner Jerry Dulac about how when you've got an asset like Chris Boswell, do you almost call the game in a certain way, knowing that with our defense, uh, we can turn it over to them with our kicker. We're going to at least get three when we get yeah. past that big logo in the middle of the field. And I thought it was interesting, the analogy he uses. He, he compared their offense to a startup company that yeah. I guess they've got some pretty good uh, initial VC funding from T.J. Watt and Chris Boswell and company. Yeah, I mean, you look at it. He, he mentioned all the, the four-year guys are younger. And just, just look at the offensive line. Yeah. Um, almost every single player on that offensive line except for Isaac Sayamalu, is 26 or younger. Now, I know James Daniels has a few more years in the league, but that guy came into the league when he was 20 or 21 yeah. years old. So not only just the line, you look at the quarterback situation when Justin's playing, you look at the receiver position, and you look at the running back position. All of those guys are young. So, yeah, of course, there's going to be a big learning curve. They all have to get on a moving train, so to speak, as a train goes by us right here at the UPMC Rooney Sports Complex. Let's flip it over to the defensive side of the ball because I think they've probably got their toughest task yet here in, in week three. I mean, Kirk Cousins looked a little bit better in week two against the Eagles, but we know he was knocking off some rust in that season opener. Down in Atlanta, we saw Bo Nix look pretty overwhelmed at times week two in Denver. Now you've got what's been the best running game in the league to this point with old Ravens play caller Greg Roman running things for Jim Harbaugh and the Chargers. They've got the, a former pair of Ravens backs doing it for them and J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards. And then obviously Justin Herbert, who if you think back to that 2021 game, Ray, Charger Steelers out in L.A. I know you and Jerry were there. I was at home watching on the couch that night. A crazy game. It came down to Justin Herbert being by far the best player on the field. Yeah. He ran all over the Steelers in that one because they kind of tried to do what's worked for them so far this season, rush four. You know, play that too high safety look and, and yeah. go man to man underneath. Trust your corners and linebackers to cover and get the job done. I was going to say initially, you, you can't do that again. You got to have a different plan. But Herbert's dealing with lower body injuries. Yeah. And Terrell Austin said, you know, you got to respect it, but it's also not like you're facing Lamar Jackson with this team. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. You know, you, you think of Justin Herbert, and for me, Brian, I don't know about you, I think about a top five, top 10 quarterback. In the NFL. Talent wise, at least, yeah. I don't know with his health right now, but he's, yeah. he's absolutely up there in terms of the arm strength, the size, the mobility. And who has more passing yards this year, Justin <laughs> Fields or Justin Herbert? I, I think it's going to be the Justin who practices right here and not yeah. the one who practices on the other coast. Well, right now, Charlotte, because yeah. the Chargers still haven't yeah. left Carolina before they come up here. But. Yeah, I mean, they're just uh, under Jim Harbaugh, they are playing differently than they were under Brandon Staley. And it's, it's been really effective. J.K. Dobbins averaging almost 10 yards a carry. Um, you put it on your defense, you put it on your running game, and you ask Herbert to make plays when he has to. So it's really uh, interesting how similar these teams are through the first two weeks of the season. We'll see what happens on Sunday at Akershore, but it seems like it's shaping up as a low-scoring affair. All, and that's been the case with a lot of teams around the league right now. I mean, the, the Herbert Fields fact that you just gave us is a good illustration of it, but the typical gunslingers that you see in the NFL and you know, just winging the ball all around. I think we all kind of reduce the game to it's a passing league yeah. nowadays. That hasn't really been the case so far in 2024. 
and, and I would say at this point, there's a lot of evidence that teams are zigging while others are zagging, yeah. trying to win in different ways. And it, it could level out over the course of the season. But right now, it seems like defenses and maybe defensive coordinators a little bit further ahead than the offensive counterparts at this point. Yeah, if you look at it, Brian, only five 300-yard passing games through the first two weeks of the season, obviously two and a half per week. If you go back to last season, just last season in 2023, there were seven 300-yard passing games per week. Go back to 2019, um, there were more than eight 300-yard passing games per week. So obviously the league is changing a little bit. Uh, we all know what's happening here in Pittsburgh, but it seems like it's kind of morphed all over the league. Yeah, it has. And we'll, we'll, you know, we'll see what's said later today after practice by the likes of Justin Fields, Russell Wilson. I, I think they're both on the docket for today. Otherwise, you know, you look at the Wednesday injury report, not a whole lot going on with the Steelers. I mean, if Michael Pruitt is your most concerning injury at the moment, that's probably a decent sign. They yeah. brought up Rodney Williams from uh, the practice squad. They signed him yeah. to the 53-man roster. I would assume that James Pierre might be back in the mix already right. for his special teams work now that Tyler Matakiewicz and Ben Skoranek are on IR. All signs, yeah, obviously pointing to Troy Fautanu and Dan Moore being your tackles. And I, I think one thing to monitor the rest of this week, Ray, or even just Sunday in game, Broderick Jones, do they try to do anything to keep him engaged? Do you use one of those six offensive lineman sets that we really haven't seen yeah. under Arthur Smith? And you really don't need to see with the way the Steelers offense is built no. because Darnell Washington's already that guy. Yeah, and even if Michael Pruitt is out, you're already running two, three, four tight end sets. Right. There's not that big need for that big jumbo tackle like maybe we saw with previous um, coordinator. So, you know, my gut feeling is I think they're going to let Broderick work his stuff out in practice. I don't necessarily think we're going to see him in games as he tries to get, you know, get back and get his confidence high again. Um, so listen, the, the way Troy Fautanu played, the way Dan Moore has been playing, you don't really want to mess with that right now. Those guys are playing really well, and I think they deserve to be the full-time starters. And they're going to have their work cut out for them this week in a major way. I mean, uh, last week in Denver, we knew Jonathan Cooper had had a good uh, week one. Uh, out on the edge at outside linebacker. Now you've got Khalil Mack on one side. You've got Joey Bosa, who says he's healthy, on the other side. Joey Bosa or Nick Bosa? I literally can never keep those jo two Joey's straight. Joey's with the Chargers. Joey Bosa for the Chargers. Yes. So I did have it. I second-guessed myself. I didn't need to. <laughs> Either way, uh, it, it's arguably the best pass rush duo in the league. I'm sure a lot of Steelers fans watching this would say no. We have that on our team. But if anybody can make a case, it's, it's probably the Chargers. So really interesting matchups for Troy Fautanu and Dan Moore this week with Broderick Jones offering competition behind them. Chris Carter and I will talk about that more, I'm sure, on the Friday morning edition of the North Shore Drive podcast, in addition to previewing week three games, Steelers versus Chargers, and taking a look around the league as well. For Ray Fittipaldo, I'm Brian Batko. Thanks, as always, for watching us here on the Post-Gazette YouTube page, or as Jerry Dulac says, postgazette.com. Thank you for checking out this content from Post Gazette Sports. If you watch this video on YouTube, please like the video and subscribe to our channel. For all of the sports coverage the Post Gazette has to offer, visit post-gazette.com.